welcome to Watercolor by Scarletainment. That's me, of course. Today we're going to talk about backgrounds. Now I have a few examples of different ways, these are all backgrounds, um, different ways I've done the background and how I've then finished them somewhat. These are all still very much in the works, but in incorporated um, objects that you actually can recognize into the backgrounds to create more of a scene. So in this case, I have used some, a really fun technique. I've used salt and different types of salt, actually. And also we've got a lot of running going on here. Now this is not back running. This is more of a bleeding. So I put the color down onto wet paper and I let it just bleed out. We're going to talk about salt um, and different types of salt and also how to combine colors on the page and how to get these beautiful bleeds in another tutorial in October. What I want to talk about today, like I said, is back runs. Now back runs would be something like these spots. These spots may have actually been created by salt, funny enough, but I do see a lot of potential backgrounds in here. I'm going to walk you through the process and show you what it looks like in real time, but I really wanted to show you what it can look like when it's done. So if you were doing a sky or if you're doing a wall, um, there's lots of reasons why you might not want a back run in your work, but there are also lots of reasons why you might want a back run. So let's say if this was foliage or here, maybe this is a waterfall and the water spraying up or um, maybe it's clouds. There's all kinds of fun things that we can do with back runs. Okay, I've got some water and a brush. Now today I'm using a size 14. Uh, this is a Kalinsky sable brush and I'm going to load it with water and just for here This is a pretty big sheet, but I'm just going to do a few small samples. I just want to drop some water Okay, I want to get it pretty thick now. We're going to talk about washes glazes um, Gradient washes all that fun stuff in tutorials coming up on a side note this palette is looking pretty blah um, it is okay. These colors will still come back. There might be a little bit of dust in the room. <laughs> so perhaps there's, these are a little dustier than they should be, but the colors will come right back. If you want to cover it, that could help, but you don't have to wash it and get rid of it. You can always reactivate uh, your watercolor paints, which is really helpful and very fun. So I've got my spot. Now I'm going to just drop in some color here. And for the sake of this, I'm going to tap the color and see if I can really get it to spread. That might help if I have more. Okay, now my water just goes here edge to edge. So as I come off and I'm outside of that uh, water spot, you can see that the paint no longer moves. It becomes perfectly straight. It just stays put. It stays exactly where I put it. But everywhere where I've put it, where the water is, it's bleeding. And it's bleeding beautifully. In fact, we're going to talk about this again, also in a tutorial in October, how I've got multiple tones here and I'm mixing them right on the palette because that is quite useful. It's a very useful technique to know. So I'm just going to add a little more. This is looking really pretty, actually. All right, now let's just leave that alone for a few minutes and see what happens. There is a pool. There's a little pool of water here and not so much, but a tiny little pool of water there. So some of these, these bleed lines are actually pulling down to this pool. And if I was to tilt the page, I would have more of that pull, which would give me more of these beautiful lines. Now, if you like these fingers, don't change them. If you want a flat wash, you're going to have to go through and actually mess this up and make it edge to edge, all one color. Right now, this is gorgeous. So for a back run, back run is essentially when you take uh, water or a second color and you add it into the first color and this can be it has to be at the right spot okay if I add it now um, this is all nice and wet and if I add the water it'll just blend and move and and be beautiful but if I wait until the sheen is gone so that shine is just just 
barely there, almost gone. Not completely dry, but getting really close to being dry. And then I tap my, my brush. So let's see if I can add some drops. So as the water drops onto the page, it pushes the paint away, making these beautiful little marks. And here again, now these are all really tiny. So while we wait for that to dry, I'm going to do another one. See if I can... There, let me change the angle, you guys can see it better. Um, so for this one, let's just do a version of a flat wash. So we have a perfect square-ish form. It's really not a perfect square at all, but it looks pretty good. So again, I want to let this dry just a little bit and we're going to drop some water in there. So let's start on the side by just dropping it now and seeing what happens. Probably need a lot more water. You guys see how that's starting to push the paint back? This is commonly called a cauliflower. And I'm just tapping the brush right into the center to make sure that the water really moves. Um, if I drop it from a little higher, it's not, uh, I'm not getting such a big cauliflower. And in this case, I want to really show you what it's going to look like. Now I've got the water in the center. And since I've done so many taps on here, I've actually activated all the paint in the core. And if I just touch my brush in there and then lift the remaining water out, as well as this tiny little bit of hair that just dropped in. Uh-oh. Um, I'm able to actually pull the, the paint right off and I get the white of the paper back. So here, this is not really about rundacks, but it's a neat way to create this interesting design, but then also pick the paint out of the center so you're lifting the paint. And we're going to talk more about how to lift paint in another tutorial in October because of course it is one of the basics. So I can keep going if I really want to add more in and I can keep lifting out if I want to do that too. You lift out using what's known as a thirsty brush. So I'm just drying my brush just a tiny bit and then coming back and lifting out a little bit more paint. So that would be a perfect example of a run back. Now this, we can see that the bleed has gone pretty much edge to edge up in this corner and that the little drops that I threw in there have dispersed. This is because the paint was so wet. In fact, I still see a tiny pool here. So it would take a lot longer for, um, it, I would have to wait a lot longer for this paint to dry before I would want to drop water in in order to create something like a run back or a cauliflower right in the middle. It is, on the other hand, um, really useful. It's a really beneficial technique if while you're painting something, let's say like a nebula, uh, or here like, like some kind of um, uh, landscape scene, if you want to actually throw in tiny bits of water to create tiny bits of texture, you won't necessarily get a huge cauliflower. You would instead get these tiny little dots and again, I can also go back in here and lift these dots out if I want them to be a little whiter. So this is cauliflowers or runbacks and how I would use them in my work. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's tutorial and I will see you in tomorrow's tutorial because of course this is the 31 in 31 and I'm having lots of fun. This is day two. Just adding a little more water to make these spots a little more pronounced because I think they look pretty cool. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I love checking out your comments. It's so much fun. And there will be um, lots of information on Patreon if you're interested in more about the materials, the final images, anything downloadable, all that good stuff. You can find that over on Patreon at Scarlet Damon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Toodaloo!